Hello, this is uh, Dr. Janes, and today we're going to do some interesting experiments with uh, Doppler radar. Okay, so Doppler radar is um, it's like an ambulance. When you have an ambulance goes by and it's making the sound, you hear a high frequency, and then uh, it creates a low frequency afterwards as it passes by. So if it's coming towards you, it's got a high frequency. What happens is, is the radiation, or in this case the sound waves from the ambulance, um, bounce off of a moving target and their frequency shifted. It's moving towards you, their frequency shifted up. It's moving away from you, their frequency shifted down. So it turns out that um, Doppler radar, like the sign that's behind me, sends out radiation, so it's a different type of frequency, at you as you drive down the road and it bounces off your car and if your car is moving toward it, it'll upshift the frequency and they can use that as a measure of how fast you're going. Let's take a little bit better look at this guy. And so, here we have uh, a little disc that I made hooked up to a Dremel tool and I can spin this disc very fast and this uh, disc spinning fast will also create a Doppler signature Okay, that these, this sign should be able to measure. And so let's, uh, let's do some experiments here and see exactly what we can do with this uh, interesting little device that we made here. Okay. Okay, let's look down here. There's no traffic coming and we have our Doppler disc here and our sign up there. And let's just turn this thing on. I think I had to have it up to the third level. 34. 31. There's no traffic coming this way. I think I gotta get it just at the right angle. 29, 32, 34, 35. Oh, here comes traffic now. Is dead. Many cars at this time. Maybe I'll try back again early in the morning. When people aren't driving so much. Okay. okay. Here we are with our uh, Doppler disc. Early in the morning, trying to uh, get in between the cars and the traffic. Let's uh, take a little bit closer look at this guy up here. And. Uh, so the idea is we're going to um, spin this disc really fast and get it at the right angle and uh, we will, uh, look at that. Yeah, it's hard to do the camera backwards. Let's see if we can, uh, there we go, Let's see if we can get some uh, Good Doppler readings from our spinning disc here. Should be very interesting, huh? Might be the last car for a little bit. And let's turn on our device. See if we can get a signal into this guy up here. It's not. Picking those up way down there. I think that's the trap and then the traffic for a little bit. We'll get our Doppler thing going here. Okay. Oh, look at that, 25 miles an hour there. Right there. Look at that, it's holding at 25. There's no cars down there. If I get it right at this angle like that, 24. Let's see if we can slow it down a little bit. There we go. Right at this angle like that. 24. Oh, 
my battery went dead. And there was no cars down there. Excellent. So it looks like our device is working. Our uh, experiment was a success. Looks like we're able to get up to a re uh, reproducible 24 miles per hour. But I have to hold the spinning disc at a certain angle in order for the Doppler return to go back properly. And uh, I can't make it spin any faster because it cuts out at the highest speed because it doesn't have enough torque. Uh, maybe I need a stronger Dremel tool or something. So, um, something to look into, but it looks like the principle should work. It's very interesting. So, we did get some results from the um, uh, Doppler uh, traffic radar. And um, let's try to measure how fast the disc was spinning approximately. So, what I have here, let's take a look down here. I have um, some uh, packing tape, a coil, a magnet, and our disc. I'm going to try to tape this uh, magnet onto the disc and we'll try spinning it and measuring the speed that it was going at. This tried to measuring a spinning disc several different ways and this seems to be the most effective way of measuring. Again, this is the uh, super magnet here. Okay. And uh, we'll stick that on the disc and tape it down and try measuring it. Okay. Should be interesting. Here we got a, some of this tape. And, oh, come on. See if I can do this with one hand. And we got our magnet here. And let's see if we can tape this guy down. Okay. Get it taped down. Then we'll chuck it back up in our Dremel tool here. And uh, try testing this out. Should be interesting, huh? Get that all chucked up. And we'll fire up our scope and uh, try to take some measurements here. Okay. We actually had to put a magnetic core inside of our coil. And we have our Dremel tool spinning. And we're going to get a signal up here. And we can measure the speed of it. I don't have it going at uh, full speed. I just have it uh, at lower speed. Let me uh, pump it up to full speed. And we'll take a measurement here. Magnet and the coil there, and um, let's just take a measurement of how fast this was going. So we'll get our cursors over there. And we'll put one in one peak, and one at another peak, and so it looks like we're going almost at 60 hertz at full speed. So I'll have to calculate what the speed of the um, We'll say 58 hertz, and you can see it was a lower frequency when I had it set at a lower dial, so that's definitely not the you know, wall current. Just a coincidence here. That's definitely not sinusoidal shape. It's what I expect from um, if you have a magnet pass by a uh, an inductor coil, you'll have a down and then an up, and then it'll recover quickly. So 60, 58 hertz, we'll say. Okay, let me do some calculations here. Okay, before we can do this calculation, we need a few more measurements. Let's measure the radius of this disc. And it is about 6 centimeters in radius. Okay, so now we can calculate the size of this disc and how fast it's spinning at the, uh, the rim here. And we'll compare that to the speed that we measured and see if we're getting what we expect. Okay. Well, one thing I want to say is remember, you'll also get a Doppler shift if uh, something's moving transverse to the way the radiation's coming in, but it won't be as big of a Doppler shift if it's uh, not uh, longitudinal toward it. But it will definitely give a Doppler shift because remember, when I was 
I was holding this at, like at a skew angle like this to the uh, radar device so maybe just these fins were uh, acting as like corner reflectors or re retro reflecting it back that's my guess and the other ones were uh, not in the path and they were rec uh, since it was skewed like that it was probably reflecting these ones on this side straight back and the ones on the other side kind of off on an angle okay that's my guess so I might do some more experiments with it it's an interesting idea I can use uh, the radar local government provided radar systems so I can test some of my experiments very interesting huh need the conversion factor of a uh, one centimeter per second is equal to uh, 0 0.0223 we'll say miles per hour okay this is in meters okay so meters divide by 100 is centimeters okay 0 0.02236 so here we go we got our handy dandy spreadsheet and Remember our frequency that we measured was about 58 hertz, so it's, it's or 58 cycles. It's going around uh, 58 revolutions every second, and our radius is about six centimeters. Okay, so our diameter is about 37 centimeters, and so if we multiply the the uh, distance of 37 centimeters times uh, 58, it's going to spin around 58 times every second. We have a velocity of about 2,185 centimeters per second. And then we use our conversion factor from before, and um, that gives us about 48 miles per hour. And remember, we measured about 24 miles per hour. And uh, I think this seems reasonable because, um, you know, if we take a look at the disc, here we got the disc here. Let's turn on some lights. So remember, 48 miles per hour is the edge of this, but actually, probably we're going to get more return through the middle of it, which is going to be traveling slower, right, because it's at a smaller radius. So halfway in is about 24, so that, that would make sense. Probably our largest signal is probably about 24 miles per hour in here. And remember also that the radar is uh, reflecting at a skew angle, so the velocity is perpendicular to uh, the way it's traveling so it won't have as high a Doppler shift in that direction so, um, so I, I would think that uh, 24 miles per hour is a completely reasonable um, expectation for our Doppler disk here okay One little project huh and uh, I think our calculations seem in order anyway started uh, building this device and then we'll test it out should be interesting huh okay so here's an interesting project <clears throat> I wanted to do some testing with some more testing with Doppler radar and the idea is I made this part I printed in 3d printer um, and I wanted to coat the top of it with aluminum tape so it'll be reflective and see these are going to be like corner reflectors and I think if I spin this really fast on a skew angle, it will have a Doppler signature in one direction where it's coming toward the radar, so it'll have an upshifted signal, and in the other direction it will be downshifted, but the radar should only look for the upshifted signal. And I have a uh, portable hand Dremel tool. Very cool, huh? charge that up with a USB and um, here is uh, a mount for one of these grinding discs cutting wheels you can cut through all sorts of stuff with this and um, it has a little screw on the top and I'm planning to stick this screw through let me get this taken apart stick the screw Hopefully this thing will mount on it because I put a little screw hole in it. And of course, you know, I'll probably make this available in Thingiverse if people want to download this for whatever. I'm actually going to use this for other experiments too. But uh, we'll see about that. And let's see if we can mount this, uh, this guy into here. Okay.
Okay, so I removed the screw from this little shaft thing here. I'm trying to feed it through the hole here. But it looks like the hole might be just a little bit too small, so maybe I will try to ream that out with a screw or a, a drill bit or something. And uh, maybe make a part for Thingiverse when I post it with a little bit bigger hole on that to make sure that the screw will fit through there. But I'm not going to reprint it. It takes too long to reprint these parts through the library. It's, I think it's close enough. So let me uh, ream that a little bit. And sometimes the tolerances are different from different printer to different printer. Depends on how, how much plastic it spews out. It'll make the part th thicker in places you don't want it to. So let me see if we can get this mounted up to our shaft and on our Dremel tool and then we'll uh, start coating this with aluminum and test that out. Okay. Okay, I guess I found a drill bit about the right size, possibly. And, uh, let's grab it with some pliers, because I don't have a drill readily available right now. I'm just stick it through and kind of ream it out. Twist it. Let's see if we can't get this hole reamed a little bit. Okay. Okay, so now we have our screw here, and it looks like our screw will fit in there okay and uh, here's our shaft on the other side and it looks like it tightens up good fits on there and I think we are all good to go so maybe we'll take this and stick this inside our Dremel tool we need to tighten it up a little bit too okay. and test this out and see how it works. Okay. Very cool, huh? Okay, there we go. Look at that. How cool, huh? Super, super duper cool. Let's just try spinning this thing. Look at that. It's not breaking. Spinning really fast, and uh, I think we're good to go. We just gotta coat this with aluminum tape, and then uh, we go test this de device out. See how it works. Very cool, huh? Okay, so here we have our aluminum foil tape and uh, some scissors, a screwdriver that I used a little bit ago, and our plate. And I was thinking. The problem with uh, coating this is that it's going to have a lot more um, distance around the outside edge than the inside, so I don't think I can wrap the tape around like this because it will start to curve the tape outward too much and I'll lose a lot of um, useful amount, basically useful area in the tape. I think I'm just going to cut some sections like this and start trying to form it radially and see, if, see how we can get the tape on here. So it's, Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and cut some sections like that, and then we'll see if we can form this into the grooves like so. Gosh, I'm gonna have to probably put the camera down see if I can. Wow. Okay. Maybe I'll have to do one at a time. Oh my gosh. Unbelievable. Okay. Look at that. Okay. I think to make this a little bit more manageable, I'm going to get a lot of tape in the center if I don't cut these in a little bit of a wedge shape. So I'll just try this. I'm going to cut, cut this into more of a wedge shape like that. Because we need to cut the whole cover the whole thing and so um, having a lots and lots of tape building up around the inside ring is not going to help okay so let me peel this off I may have to do this one ridge at a time 
come on. These things are always so hard to find them. Oh, gosh. Oh, there we go. Okay. Let's see if we can stick this down and get it onto our ridges like we want without it sticking in the wrong spot. thumbnail in there and force it down over this top ridge and then I think I'll probably just cut off the excess I have to do these one ridge at a time wow that's all the tape will cover try to get it all flat and smeared down okay and um, I did want some on the outside because I was going to do some other experiments which I'm not going to talk about here, but uh, let me try cutting this with the razor blade and folding it down maybe. There we go. Get some excess down there. done so I guess I'll go through and do this for all of them and see how that works out okay. I'll coat this whole disc with aluminum tape okay. let me work on that and we'll get back to this in a second Okay, so here we go, and let's, uh, I guess, turn her on and make sure she spins okay. That not that beautiful? Okay, I think we should be able to get some Doppler return off of this. It should be very interesting. Okay, anyway, this is a... Uh... This is Dr. Janes and thanks for watching.